Hi, Annette Lang here. Welcome to my podcast, The History of Personal Training, or at least my experience in it. This podcast will be a combination of my stories. Full disclosure, I might not remember things exactly the way that you did. Now, my stories of 30 plus years in the fitness industry and then specifically personal training. I was at the beginning of a lot of events, the firsts, so to speak, and so I hope you enjoy those stories. In addition, I'll be interviewing lots of different people whom I've met through the years, and I think that will help piece together a wonderful uh, timeline of the development of this profession that we now call personal training. Enjoy. Today's interview is with Chris Imbo. Chris had a lot of background in the fitness industry before I heard of him at Equinox, and since then, He's done lots of different stuff. His passion is palpable in this story. Enjoy. Okay, so Chris Imbo, it is such a pleasure to see you and speak to you. I would like you to talk about your experience in the personal training fitness field, how you got into it, why you got into it. I knew you through Equinox, even though I'm not sure we crossed paths. And then what you've been doing since then. I'll I'll, wow. inter- I'll interrupt as necessary. <laughs> well, it's been an, an amazing, amazing journey. It's uh, you know, fitness has been part of my life for as long as I can remember. As, as a very, very young kid and uh, playing football in high school and working out on Nautilus equipment. Uh, back now, in the, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in a town called West Islip, okay. uh, Long Island, New York. Yeah. And um, we had a great sports program there, a uh, big public school. I, my graduating class had over 700 kids in it. So, um, you know, we were, we were out there doing it. So um, it, was, um, it was a great upbringing. And, um, but I was drawn to sports and athletics and um, actually went to uh, the University of Miami for a few years and played a little bit of college football there. And, um, again, athletics, um, Biology was my major at the time, and um, you know, so very much into uh, kinesiology and anatomy and physiology, and, and of course, you know, my athletic background, uh, you know, drew me more and more into loving um, sports and athletics. So, um, and you were working on Nautilus machines. I remember those. Oh uh, uh, yeah, no, right, exactly. Uh, it was nice and simple back then. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so, then what happened after that? Well, you know, I, 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 after I left the University of Miami, I, I moved to, I uh, went to school at Stony Brook, and um, Stony Brook, not a Long Island, and um, and got a part-time job at a gym. So I um, was working as kind of a line assistant to a Nautilus gym. Okay, and, what year are we talking about now? Uh, 1983. Yes. <laughs> Because I was doing the uh, same thing in Florida, working the lines at a Nautilus gym. Well, I yeah, well, it's uh, it was it was you know we were setting seats and, and and pulling pins and just encouraging people to get through their fifteen you know fifteen machines, and as quickly as possible. We had an incredible assembly line. It was a great experience because it was personal trainings with connecting the dots. You know, yeah. Um, so there wasn't a lot of thinking and, and programming. It was just you know kind of get them through. Uh, but it was tons of fun, and uh, and it would be a bit, it's a good workout for for the average American, right? Uh, oh my gosh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a fantastic workout. I, I miss my my certain <laughs> all the circuit training. <laughs> um, yeah, and and did that for uh, two or three years, and um, tried to get into medical school, and and couldn't couldn't get in. They wouldn't let me in. Um, wow, that's ambitious. Yeah. And so it was 19, I guess, 1986, 87. And, you know, I, I read about this guy in California, this celebrity personal trainer uh, named Jake. and Oh, Body by Jake. Right. And so he was driving around in his Mercedes uh, training Steven Spielberg and all these celebrities. And, and, you know, and I said, you know what? I really, really think I would be great at that. And um, I went back to school um, and studied more sports uh, sports and athletics um, sciences right. and, and got my certification in 1989 through um, the American College of Sports Medicine. 
Ace, I think, was just kind of coming online at that point, and um, became a trainer in, in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, wow. Uh, for about three or four years, and uh, actually a little bit, yeah, about three years, and then um, had a girlfriend, met a girl, <laughs> came back to New York, and was trying to figure out what to do with my life, and, and I wanted to stay in the in the industry. It wasn't really much of an industry back right. then. Right. You know, there were probably four of us. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, um, and I happened to just run into an old friend on the Upper West Side uh, of New York who said, you know, uh, I'm working for these really cool guys. They're opening this gym uh, called Equinox. You should go and talk to them. Um, who, who was the guy, or do you want to say? Or uh, it was a, it was a, a girl, an old friend from high school, actually, a girl who was working in the sales department. Okay. And so, um, and I can't even remember her name. <laughs> sadly, that's right. Uh, too many reps. Um, but we, I went and hit it off with the Ericos, and it was it was two months before they were opening their first location in New York. Right. Um, and you know, I had the credentials, and you know, I was probably very senior to to most of the people that they were hiring. They were hiring kids, you know, and, right. and at that point, I, I was almost you know, pushing thirty at the time. This and, is the early nineties, um, right? This is nineteen ninety one. Yeah, nineteen ninety one. Yeah, um, and you know, because Equinox just had their twenty fifth anniversary. Right. And. Uh, and I was employee, you know, I was, in terms of fitness staff, I was probably employee number three, you know, <laughs> so, um, and so it was amazing opportunity, I know, I, and I, I, you know, money-wise, it was a, a step down, <laughs> but uh, I saw it as this incredible opportunity, and, and, and the Ericos were amazing, you know, they really saw the future, you know, they, they've defined the future That's so fitness. true. You know, and um, I just jumped over, jumped on it. I and I just I knew I'd have to hustle, and I and I was loving it. I loved every minute of it. I trained, I trained ten or twelve clients a day. I'm wow. not kidding, ten or twelve clients a day, um, loving every second, loving the connection with my clients and the great, amazing people that I've met through that organization. And um, and within six months, you know, they said, "Listen, you're doing a great job. You know, would you like to?" help form and structure the personal training department right and you know and, and I said sure it's amazing so you know I did it and I uh, kept training at the same time and um, Bob Esquire was there actually Bob was running um, he was doing a competitive aerobics program that's right okay and they were tearing it up the aerobics program as you know back then in the early 90s was bar none um, and it was it was the place to be. It was it was the center of the universe. It was so tight and so like happening. And but now, um, tell, talk about the the Elite Plus program because that's when I well, first uh, got there. Didn't you well, start that, that? That right? was uh, ish. I was part of that. Um, you know, I was framing out all the infrastructure, the the tracking systems, and I worked with program. You know, I was really kind of looking at ways to streamline the actual business. Okay. Um, you know, we had, we. I was one of five floor trainers when we started. Wow. And um, it just, it was like somebody flipped a switch and we went from five to 50 overnight. Wow. I mean, it, it, it was pretty amazing. So, um, and I just had an amazing experience you know, converting these young, a lot of them weren't even certified, you know, uh, they'd have, they'd come in raw. They had, if they, if their mom and dad raised them right, they were, they were candidates for, for right. doing that. Right. And, um, you know, and we saw that and it all was, it was, if they had the passion and they had the manners and they kind of understood people and they had this incredible empathy, which is what we were looking for at the time, everything else could be taught. Yes, and you know that's where Bob kind of came in, and they you know, started to structure the educational program. But for me, it was I was doing all the foundational groundwork, you know, and and really just kind of testing whether this was a viable business. It wasn't part of their business plan. It wasn't and part of it. Okay. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't. Ah. It, it, it one. It wasn't at all. It, they had you know they had a little bit of a system going there where you know you had, 
if people wanted it, fine. But it wasn't really something that was marketed. It wasn't part of their plan. And, you know, it went from zero to $80,000 a month in, in six months, you know. So it was, and I'm just talking, you know. It yeah. was just amazing. And I think it's important to understand the finances of it because um, that's that kind of really, it justifies the need and it justifies the, um, you know, the effort and energy that goes into, you know, putting together a product like that. You know, it's not an easy task. Right. You know. Uh, so, well, I, I remember I was um, managing the first Crunch location in a little dance studio in the West Village and Courtney Barrel lived in the neighborhood and she worked out there and we were talking and I told her my love of fitness and the Nautilus history I had and she said, well, why don't you be a personal trainer? I said, well, there's no way you can actually do that. And she said, we're doing that at Equinox. <laughs> and she talked me into, encouraged me to go and, and I heard about your Elite Plus training program. Yeah, Courtney, which, I think, Courtney, it's funny, funny because I, I think I may have hired her um, <laughs> I can't really recall. I mean, so much has happened between sure. that, from that point to this point in my life. You know, I'm turning I'm turning 55 this year. Excellent. And um, so, and I still train. I'm out there hitting it every day, and I'm actively training with my clients. Uh, you know, we're we're training for some marathons this year, and that's terrific. Um, you know, so I'm hands on. You know, and, uh, so and, so when did know. when did you leave Equinox? Um, I left in 93. I was only there for about two and a half years, yeah. maybe, maybe three years. Yeah. Um, got them off the ground. They were just opening up their second club. Yeah, down, you, yeah and, you, you, uh, did, you were a huge impact because when I got there, like, that's what a lot of people talked about was your impact. Well, there. the machine was running. You know, yeah, and, but, yeah. But, they, but again, you, know, I look, you look back and go, holy cow, these guys, you know, they, just, right. they just nailed it. And, so what, you know, what did you, hired, what did you do it. after that? Where, where did you go to after um, that? Well, I had an opportunity. I, I, I produced a, an exercise video, which I was excited about, and um, I wrote a book that I was excited about. And part of what I brought to the Equinox um, was – uh, a program that I developed in Palm Beach called uh, Peak Ten it was my. Oh, kind sorry. Of, Peak Ten was the program. Yeah, Elite it, Plus was yeah. the training level later. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Peak Ten, of course. Right, and you um, know that was kind of, and I'm still selling them, believe it or not. <laughs> Wait, okay. So what's Peak Ten? Um, it's basically a ten week intensive, you know, and, and it, it gets people really highly focused on modifying their lifestyle and. Uh, adding uh, graduated exercise to their lives and, and trying to get them you know, on track. It all depends where they are. Some people come in and, and they, have, they have been exercising years and others have been exercising but really need a kind of a little bump or kick and, um, and it still helps them do it. It's just focused and we've kind of modified it a bit and streamlined it and adjusted it to the modern science and, and it still works. You so know? how many, how many work, hours a day, how many days a week? You know, it... it it's basically about um, anywhere between, I'm trying to think, because it's really anywhere between four and a half to six hours a week. Okay. Depending on um, what the and person. And, and, yeah, and that's split over, over four days generally. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of coaching and there's a lot of um, support in terms of nutrition and um, guidance through uh, all aspects of, of you know, lifestyle modification. Right. Um, and it's it's still going, you know. Because you, you you also had the, um, a private training facility for a while, right? Right. Based um, or I, based on or including that philosophy? Yeah, or? it was including. It was pretty much based on it because that was kind of the basis and, and the general idea. Um, yeah, um, my wife and I at the time uh, we opened that gym in '94, and it was a very exclusive little studio. It was called and, Casa uh, Fitness. Yeah, exactly. Right? Right. Casa Specialized Private so, Fitness. And uh, we were up on the Upper East Side. There was yeah. we had no, there was nothing else up there at the time, and uh, we had the best time of our lives. We had an amazing twelve year run there, uh -huh. um, and, and then we fell subject to a landlord who just wouldn't cooperate. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So, but, do, um, uh, Chris, Chris, do do you still? Um, cause I remember I struggled with that. Like, do I want to work with people who are like only going to commit for a certain amount of time, or like? You know, because I mean, like, that's intense, right, to commit to the peak 10. But, like, right. do, you, do you also work with people who are, like, well, not so motivated, but they still want to work with you once a week or twice a week? or? 
Everybody, everyone is going somewhere with me. Awesome. We're, yeah, awesome. I, I don't do the babysitting thing. Um, I've lost my patience for that. Okay, so you don't, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I, I pour so much of myself into my clients. You know, it's this has been a part of, this has been a, a huge part of my life for for a more than time. half my life. Right. And, you know, so I, I, I pour everything in. You know, these people become... Uh, you know, it, generally, what happens is that they do a program and then they stick around for three to five years. Um, you know, my attrition rate is pretty low. Uh, oftentimes, I have to kind of move people around and, and maybe find trainers for them because I I, I want to continue to do my short term programs. And um, I see, right, and to the point where I, I travel with a lot of my clients now. Do you? Those, we do these programs anywhere from two to three weeks, kind of off site. And you know, I've become actually quite a, a quite a chef, and I've uh, <laughs> I prepare all the you know the spa cuisine and and so that's uh, when you travel with the, people. You do that here in New York too. I or? no, I do that. I do that exclusively when I travel wow. you know, or, or have have someone with me who who kind of focuses on that as well. So it okay. depends on how large are the the groups. It's either one on one or it's one on four, one on five, uh -huh. somewhere one, along those lines. Um, but those are great. That's kind of where I want to, how I want to retire into that, this business is just do more and more of those. Right. Now, uh, and so when, when you leave town to travel with people, then you hook up your current, your local clients with other people and. Yeah, or, I, usually, and I do, I do, I try to schedule in and around uh, right. you know, breaks where I know people are, are off and about. Uh huh. But uh, it's it's just a great way to you know don't you wish you could just move in with your clients right and, and uh, definitely yeah and, and and control every aspect of their life and that's what that allows you to do and if you if you're fortunate enough or they're fortunate enough to be able to carve out the time and they can do the the two to three weeks then you can you can make some major headway uh, the first week is a lot of times it's just adjusting and acclimating and detoxing and all the things that are painful and uncomfortable. It's week two and week three that just, you know, where you start to get the momentum and then you carry it back, right? You bring that back with you um, and it doesn't end. You just, you know, you're able to kind of, you've got momentum, you're in orbit now and it's just go, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's a lot easier to do that. It's, but the first, I find the first uh, three weeks are the toughest and that's critical for making the biggest Jeez. impact. Um, yeah. And then, do you do you work out of a facility, or are you strictly going to people's homes right now? Um, right now, I basically work out of mostly out of my clients. Uh, they're again, they're fortunate enough to have facilities uh, either in their homes or you know in their buildings here in right. New York. And um, when that's not uh, possible, then I rent some studio space uh, up on the Upper East Side. It's pretty pretty much my primary location. Is the Upper East Side? Or yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. So, um, well, I, I, I always like to ask people, um, if somebody new is coming into this industry, uh, what couple of words of wisdom do you have for them? And then the other question is, people who don't know our industry, what would you tell them about us or about what, what this industry is all about that maybe they don't right. realize? Well, gosh, first off, it's, it's changed dramatically over the last 25 years and pushing 30 years for me at this point um i think there first of all i think there are even greater opportunities today because there are, are so many areas of specialty that one can can focus on um you know, multiple different genres and niches within the industry as a whole right um, and certainly as you know us uh, over 50, you know, that, you know, it, our needs are a lot different than, you know, someone at the age of 20 or 30. Um, and so, again, there, my advice is that, you know, don't ever think that there's no opportunity. There, there are huge opportunities um, in terms of how to, uh, uh, you know, define yourself as a professional and, um, you know, uh, get the right education, affiliate yourself with the right organizations and, um, and put your head down, and, and, and most people get in this industry, uh, you know, more so for the passion. That's my, that's certainly how I entered the industry. I agree with that, yeah. And, um, you know, it's it's one of these things where you're, you're doing it for the love of health and wellness and certainly, um, you know, wanting to help people and really make a change. And as frustrating as that is right. sometimes, 
Um, and gosh, you know, you had no idea how many times I wanted to open up the taco stand and on the beach and just go and sell tacos and drink beer. Um, so many times because it's it's really really frustrating at times. You know, it's a human nature. It's you know, such a small percentage of people out there in the world um, dedicate themselves to a lifestyle that actually will support. Um, you know, health and well-being and fitness and, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, the aesthetic that everyone's chasing. Um, but the other 95% are on kind of a bit of, uh, you know, a roller coaster. And, um, you know, it's great for the industry, but in terms of, you know, generating, <laughs> generating revenues. But at the end of the day, I mean, how many people are truly getting helped? And that's what I've struggled with my entire career is, you know, how do I, where's the pill? Where's the, what, you know, where's the magic? And I know, but dude, I, I know I've talked to you about this years ago. Like, what about helping the person who's not that motivated to make a huge change, but at least if they meet you, they're getting to the gym for a workout once a week, even though they're not going to make a huge change, at least you're helping them not oh, no, get, get worse at a slower yeah. rate. No, 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 no. I, absolutely. There's no mm-hmm. question. I'm all about just a just a little bit. I mean, just just better is kind of my tagline. Okay, but you, you're better. not going to take me as your client unless I commit, right, to huge changes. Um, it doesn't have to be huge changes. It just it, we need to get on a road to somewhere. Okay. Okay, and that's that's really what I'm hoping for. I'm, I don't want to turn you into a world class athlete. You, you know, it's not what I'm happy. To, I'm plenty. I have plenty of clients who are in their 70s and 80s. And they're keeping the tide at bay, you know, and, and if right. they're keeping the and tide at bay. And that is success, yeah. That is a huge success, success. okay, because not only are they keeping the tide at bay, you know, they're, 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 they're living a full life. And yes. that's, to me, awesome. so rewarding, so awesome. rewarding, you know. Um, but, you know, coming back to, the, to that question is, the second part of the question is, mm-hmm. you know, understand that, you know, there are limits to what we can do and, and to your point, which is, you know, understanding that. And I, again, I struggle with that because I'm one of these guys who just really wants to whip out the magic wand and, and fix people and kiss them on the cheek and send them on their way. Right. Um, and it's, that's, 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 I struggle with that because I, I do want people to, because first of all, we all have this amazing potential, right. To, to live a completely healthy you know, disease-free uh, life. If we, you know, it, we certainly can eliminate so much through diet and exercise. Yes. And you know, we, we, you and I both know that the world probably knows it, but we, you know, as a society, uh, we struggle with that. And um, and so, you know, again, that's part of my frustration. I'm so into this, and I get it, and I understand it, and I live it. My children live it. You know, and, and, and people all who I associate live it. And so, you know, it's frustrating because when you see people who are younger than us, you know, who are really having a hard time with it. And, um, you know, it's hard. It's really just hard. I, t- I take it very personally. So it's... Um, so, so, that's, the, that, so, so is that what you mean by like what the average person walking down the street doesn't understand about the fitness professional or, or doesn't know about like how, like how in- intent and focused and passionate you are or like anything else you want to say about that in, in closing or, or? Yeah, sure. I, yeah. I think that here's the thing when you, when you're a professional in this industry and you, it's guttural, right? You, when you're so emotionally um, into this, and and I and, and I've never been the most technical trainer on the planet. This has never been my area of expertise. I've relied on other people to help me, you know, with programming and um, understood. Yeah, and I've always and, and it's all, a lot of what I've always brought to the the equation was motivation through proper marketing and and communications and. Um, you know, if you're good at that, if you're not good at that, certainly work on that because that goes a long way. Right. There's, there's no shortage of information out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, but what you do need to do is you need to be able to speak uh, to this industry uh, in a way that's, um, you know, that doesn't scare people away. Right. Uh, and because it's intimidating for a lot of people and it's, that's it's true. difficult, you know, there, it's, there's so many emotional components to this and 
if you could help people overcome their fear and whether it's emotional or physical fear of uh, some physical um, um, if you're scared of getting hurt you know so you need to be right. able to kind of be have really great bedside manner and um, but if you and, and I'm sorry I'm kind of going off on a bit That's of a okay. here. you know the in wrapping things up I think that you know when you're when you're seriously committed to this industry um, you'll 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 succeed uh, it's just it's the passion it doesn't matter what shape you're in you don't need to look a certain way as long as your heart and your mind is in the right place um, you'll do a great job and you'll you'll have a following and it doesn't take a lot of people for you to support yourself on and, and if you continue to stay committed to it um, you'll have one of the best lives you could ever imagine uh, uh, that's so well said <laughs> well Thank you very much, Chris. I'll um, maybe get back to you another time for more, if that's okay with you. That'd be great. All right, yeah, awesome. I would love it. Yeah, thanks a lot for your time. Uh, all right. All right, all right. I'll see you in the hood. Yeah, thank right, you. Great. Hope so. Th thank you. Take care.